Joining us now at what you've defined as the starship, basically, here is uh, Seth Maskett from the University of Denver. Uh, let's start with the most breaking presidential news. On Friday, the NRA came out and endorsed Donald Trump. Are we surprised by this? Uh, in many ways, this isn't very surprising. This is a long-standing supporter of many Republican candidates, and this is just a process by which Republican uh, supporters are sort of coming home and signaling that Donald Trump is the real Republican nominee, and they're all sort of rallying behind him. Compared to Speaker Ryan, Speaker of the House, um, endorsing someone versus saying, you haven't quite got my support, but I'm not going to vote for the Democrat. What's, what's the biggest difference between saying, yes, I support you, or I don't support the other person? <laughs> Well, in, in many ways, it has to do with the set of issues that they're talking about. Um, Speaker Ryan cares for a, uh, a wide variety of conservative issues and uh, to which Donald Trump is not necessarily very supportive. Um, so the two of them still have some differences to work out. Whereas there's probably not a lot of daylight between the NRA and Donald Trump. They seem to be more or less in line with each other, and they didn't have a real problem backing him. We just heard Ryan Frazier say he will support the nominee. Does that still leave room for a third candidate, do you think? Do you think someone will come out of the woodwork? Probably not at this point. It's, it's highly unlikely that they'd be able to nominate someone other than Donald Trump at, at the convention. It's highly unlikely that there'll be a third party candidate with any real support behind him or her. Um, it's, it's looking very much like it's Trump and, and Frazier, like many other uh, longstanding Republicans, will probably end up backing him. There are a lot of speakers at a convention. What can we expect building up to Donald Trump actually accepting the nomination? You have to find people that are going to endorse that person and say such good things about that person and uh, and show that? up. And so be many there. These people have said they won't be there, right? What's the list that we're looking at? Yeah, well, there's quite a few who won't be there. Some will. Um, there's quite a few who are in contested races and want to make sure that the parts of the party, the voters, the activists that are very passionate about Trump are also there to support them in the fall and turn out for that. So it, it'll be possible for gubernatorial candidates, Senate candidates, congressional candidates to show up and talk about the need to support Republicans up and down the ticket without necessarily getting very into what Donald Trump will or would not do as president. Let's talk about Trump and Clinton. Is there bad blood now? It seems that all of a sudden her tone has gotten harsher, that she's more directed at him rather than um, Bernie Sanders. Yeah, well, we're, we're entering what looks like the general election phase. Yeah. Uh, the primaries are really winding down. Um, it's looking very strongly like she will be the Democratic nominee. It's looking very strongly like Trump will be the Republican nominee. And so they're shifting into the mode where they're going to be trying to pull each other down. Um, and we can expect a lot of this until November. I mean, it's really, it's, you know, given the nature of these candidates that uh, they, you know, they have a lot of history in, in politics or in, in the public eye. People know them. And there's a lot, essentially, to tear down in the other person's record. And I know it's expected, but is there bad blood between these two sides? We, we have seen pictures of them attending <laughs> family weddings and so forth. Ha has that relationship changed? Probably prior to this election cycle, there wouldn't have been a lot of bad blood. I mean, they knew each other, um, but it wasn't necessarily all that personal. Um, but the fact that you have uh, Donald Trump, who said uh, a number of things about prominent women uh, that are seen as very offensive, and you have Hillary Clinton, a uh, staunch lifelong feminist, pairing up against each other, uh, that actually the, it's a real recipe for some fireworks. We saw Ted Cruz uh, have a vice presidential candidate before he was the nominee. Now we're seeing a list of possible Supreme Court justices that Donald Trump would want, including Allison Ide from here in Denver. What do I take from, you're not, you're not the nominee officially yet, you're not the president yet, but here's that list. If I am that person, why, why should I care that I'm seeing some names? It's kind of surprising to do that very early. I mean, we rarely even see that out of sitting presidents. They, they rarely release uh, a list of candidates that they're interested in for Supreme Court seats. Um, this is probably a, a, a chance for Donald Trump to demonstrate, A, that, that he knows something about national politics. Um, it's, it's a chance to signal that he's thought about some names, that here's the sort of people who he would uh, pick for high office, because we really don't have much of uh, a, a sense of that from him otherwise. We don't have any example of him serving in any office or picking anyone else to, to sit in a high office. It'll be all interesting right. to see how it all pans Absolutely. Out. Seth Maskett, thank you so much for joining us well, today. Thank you for having Hop me. Hop on board. We'll beam you back to do you. <laughs> we'll be right back.